Welcome back, family and friends. And I've got the Partial of Terror for February last month. So that'll be awesome to check out. It has been here for a week or so. I'm finally getting around to doing the video. But this is the February Crown Partial of Terror, like I was just saying. Always, always my, one of my favorite things to get in the mail. Can't wait to get into it and see what creations Jason McKittrick came up with. And this particular month, the theme is, I believe it's hauntings. Now, I don't know if it's based on movies that had haunting themes or these are original pieces from Jason McKittrick over there and his fellow artists. I don't know, but let's get in here and see. I'm sure it looks fantastic. So I got an old duck knife here. Cut into the box. And we'll see what kind of creations we have. And hopefully I got the theme right. Boom. There we go. Got it open. I got the flyer. Something fell out, but it fell face down. I didn't get to see it, so I'm not going to look at it yet. And let's see if we got this theme correct. Cryptocurrency Partial Terror. Before we had horror films, we had ghost stories. Told around campfires and schoolyards, these tales would grow and change and as they passed through each town or county. Every state and country has hitchhiking ghost, a ghost ship, a wailing woman, maybe not a ghost pig though. <laughs> the tales I've collected here represent notable examples of each. And if you've never heard of them, I hope you research further. So, it sounds like Jason Kittrick based these off um, literary tales, hauntings, you know, folklore, and maybe some things that he came read, and he's hopefully we take some interest in it, like H.P. Lovecraft and all that good stuff, Edgar Allan Poe. It's just plenty of great stuff out there to read. You just got to know what to look for, people. So, let's see what we can find out from uh, this... Uh, art producing machine Jason McKittrick. Alrighty. I'm just gonna reach in and see what we got there. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. This is wild looking. Looks like maybe Samheimer. I'm not sure. We'll find out who the artist is, but look at that. It's like a ghoulish looking cemetery scene. It's like a ghoul. Let me maybe I don't know what's going on there, but it's very interesting. Give you a quick once over. We'll read about that in a minute, but let's keep digging in the box. I got some black tissue paper. Can't figure out if I want to sit up here on the front of the fireplace or sit in the floor. <laughs> I saw something, but I'm gonna grab it out. This is uh, the magnet. It's a good size. Well, it's a magnet. I don't know if it's a B magnet, but this is very intriguing because it's purple and it's an ugly looking demon pig. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Look at that. That is awesome. It's like purple purple resin with uh, like a pink paint finish on it. And red beady eyes and some little ghastly looking teeth there. And the lights are washing out all the pink, but I assure you it's nice and pink. I'll take some better pictures and you know how I do a Cryptocurrent videos. I try to put pictures at the end. That is fun. It's a magnet. Reaching in, we're grabbing the next item. Ha, <laughs> we got the little figurine. This is the next in the little figurines from Jason. He started doing figurines this year. And I don't know if this one glows in the dark, but it really appears like it does. But this is like a like a, like a a witch or something. I'm not sure. But it's got some good detail, and the lights are definitely not going to show you all that detail. Let's see. There you go. It's got nice detail in the robes there. And this is a hard piece to show on camera. But sorry about that, everybody. But I can assure you it looks awesome. And it's got a little green tint to it, like glow in the dark. So maybe it glows in the dark. But it's like a little, little witch. And it's a lot of detail in that face. Can I get it? There we go. That's a little better. But it's, it's going to be really hard to show you all this one, but I assure you, it looks awesome. 
If you've watched any Cryptocurium related video on my channel, you know it all looks awesome. Got a gummy body part. I got a gummy ear. I will eat that gladly. And we've got one more item. And it's a doozy. It's a huge ghost ship wall plaque. That is awesome. Ghost ships, of course, are nice and haunting. And this is going to be difficult to show you all the detail on this, but it's a lot of detail in, this, in the sails here and on the wood and the water. we got the ripple going on. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Let me get it in close. I don't know if this glows in the dark either. It kind of looks like it does, but I'll read it on the flyer and see. There you go. Got some good detail for you there. It's pretty cool. A ghost ship. All right, next. That is all that's in the box. And now we'll see what the description on the flyer says about these items. And we'll go through them again real quick. Next, first on the list is the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> Everybody's heard that if you watched any Pirates of the Caribbean movie. The Flying Dutchman. Hold it up for you. The spectral ship told of by sailors of the high seas for centuries. It is said that this cursed vessel was doomed to sail the seas for eternity. Never to make port. Legend also states that any sailor who is unlucky enough to, to glimpse this glowing ghost ship would soon meet their own end. Cast in glow-in-the-dark resin. There you go, everybody. Comes ready to hang with attached metal latch. Glows in the freaking dark. That's awesome. I'm going to gladly put that up. I love stuff that glows in the dark. I have a number of magnets over here. You got your Jason, you got your Freddy. Anthony DePino's magnets over here behind me. They all glow in the dark. I love stuff that glows in the dark. Like you turn my lights off in this room and numerous things glow all around the room. That'll be a cool addition right there. Maybe I can get a picture and end of the video of it glowing for you. All right. Sam Heimer. I knew it. He's got such a style to his work. Like a pen style to his work. But here you go. Here's the Sam Heimer print. Resurrection Mary. Sam Heimer brings us this a depiction of one of the most famous hitchhiking ghost stories in America. The story goes that Mary had spent the evening dancing with her boyfriend at the old Henry Ballroom. At some point, they got into an argument, and Mary had to spend the evening... Well, hold on. Sorry. At some point, they got into an argument, and Mary stormed out. Even though it was cold winter night, she thought she would rather face a walk home than spend another minute with that her boyfriend. She left the ballroom and started to walk up Archer Avenue. She had not gotten very far when she was struck and killed by a hit-and-run driver who fled the scene, leaving Mary to die. Her parents found her and were grief-stricken at the sight of her dead body. They buried her in a resurrection cemetery, wearing a beautiful white dancing dress and matching dancing shoes. The hit-and-run driver was never found. Mary's ghost is said to walk along Archer Avenue at the night near the anniversary of her death every year. She has been spotted numerous times over the years and has even been picked up by motorists only to disappear after she enters the vehicle. I have actually heard that story before. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't realize it until right then. I really seemed like I've seen it in a movie somewhere too. But that was a lot of reading. Sorry if I fumbled over it, but I feel like the, you need to hear all of this to get the real true um, details of these pieces here. Alrighty. Next up, what we got here? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see if I can read this one. You're not going to be able to see this hearse. I'll see if I can... Um, I don't know how to display that for you guys. I'm sorry. 
But this is a uh, Lenora Monster Mini, the weeping mother of Mexican lore. Laura Nora is said to be the spirit of the woman who drowned her own children and then herself after being driven insane by mistreatment by her husband. She wanders the banks and lakes and watersides howling in mourning full agony as she searches for her children. To hear her cry is believed to be a portrait of doom. Plast this is casting glow-in-the-dark resin as well. That is awesome. Glows-in-the-dark. I really hate that y'all can't see this lady's face. There we go. It is so much good detail in this little guy. This little lady, I guess I'm going to say. She had an eerie story. Alrighty. Next up here, we have the Jody Magnet. I kind of thought that's what this was, Amityville related. That is cool. Alright, here we go. The Jody Magnet. The Jody Magnet from the infamous and possibly dubious tale of Amityville Horror comes the spectral pig Jody. This entity was seen on numerous occasions by the Lutz family during their terrifying 28 day stay in the house, seemingly from hell. Jody was described as a cartoon pig with the teeth of a wolf that haunted the attic of the house and surrounding areas, cast in style of residence, individually hand painted. So that is awesome. I don't know if I believe the whole Amityville thing. I don't. Y'all believe in that? I mean, it's always up for debate. I'm not too quite sure about it. But I know the movie creeped me out as a kid. <laughs> Jody Magnet. That is awesome. And it's all purple. Pink and pink paint. That is awesome. Little beady eyes on it. Alrighty. And at the bottom says ghost stories. Here's a bit of fun. I hope you'll join in with join me in. If you're doing an unboxing video or post including a personal ghost story you may have experienced, you'll be entered into a prize that will be revealed right around the time you receive this. Cool. Please no fiction. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do I have a horror story that really happened? Like a terrifying story. Um, we used to have this place we called the Troll Bridge in my hometown. And we would, uh, it's way outside of town and you would go and it's this old rickety steel, rickety steel bridge with wooden planks that are all busted and broke and rails all bent because it looks like maybe somebody had hit them a few times or ran off into the river below. And we would just go down there, hang out and drink, you know, and, and always dare each other to go up under the bridge. And um, one night we are hanging out there, we were just under the bridge we went under the bridge to see if, what we could find. And I was walking around, you know, just chilling out, having a beer or so with the buddies. And we we were looking around, and me and my best friend, we happened to look over, and we saw this stark white, like, silhouette of, of a ghostly-looking, just pale-looking, I, I can almost draw you a picture of it. But it was like right looking out from behind the tree, like a person looking out from behind the tree. And I, 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 went, I just went blank. I didn't know what to say. I was like, did you, did you see that? And he's like, yeah, I saw it. It was leaf. So we always called it the white, the white man in the woods. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And uh, we really didn't go hang out there much after that. We, we still visited the place and told people about it. And there's always billy goats and owls and things hooting and hollering out there, freaking out people. But... Not too long ago, we went back through that area, and they completely rebuilt the bridge, and it's just not the same anymore. It looks all nice and shiny. So, anyway, we it's just something creepy we did. We did a lot of creepy stuff in my child, well, teenage years. We went and did a, a Ouija board, 
in the middle of a cemetery on a grave one night. Yeah, we're, we were crazy. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, what did y'all think of the partial tear for February 2018? I loved it as usual, especially the glow-in-the-dark ship. That is awesome. And the Jody magnet, that is amazing. This is way bigger than a lot of these magnets back here, the traditional slasher magnets. And I want to let everybody know the March partial tear that I will be featuring here on this channel is themed slashers. And not your usual slashers, your Freddy's or your Jason, but the underrated slashers. I look forward to seeing that box. And everybody get it. go to Crypticurium. The link will be in the description below. And please, if you're a fan of Predator, you need to get in on the, uh, let me see, the April box, I believe. The April Partial Terror is all dedicated to the headhunter himself, Predator. So that'll be awesome. I got Predator magnets right here from Cryptocurium. They're amazing. And I don't know if I got the, the months right. I hope I do. I believe the March box coming out is Slashers. That'll be here soon. And then the April box will be dedicated to the Predator, I believe. So everybody... Thank you, Jason Critchick, for all the work you did over there. Like, comment, subscribe, and stay spooky, everybody.